these stars, these variable natures um, of the different stars that we see in our night sky, this has been known by Aboriginal people for a long time um, and it has been observed by Aboriginal people for a long time. Now this has been recorded in one specific oral tradition that we can share with you um, and this story is of the humiliation of a constellation called uh, Nairuna uh, from the Kakatha people. Um, and this refers to the constellation, uh, as we know in the Western world, as Orion. Now, Nairuna, he, similar to Orion, he's a skilled hunter, he's great, you know, he's a real hunk, everyone loves him, he's doing great, um, but he's real full of himself as well, you know, as very similar to the Orion story. Um, now he's also a womanizer um, and he preys on these young sisters. Now the Yugalari sisters, uh, they are of course the sisters of the Pallades Open Star Cluster. Now the story says that Nayaruna, he chases the girls across the sky each and every night. He tries to trick the girls in order to catch them um, and he will hide nearby to try and surprise them and steal them basically. Uh, but they often outsmart Nairuna, um, you know, knowing where he's going to be hiding, knowing, becoming familiar with his tricks and they avoid him for a really long time. Now the elder sister, Kambagda, she is sick of it, she's over these tricks of being chased and she stands up for herself and her younger sisters. And the way in which she stands up for herself um, is that she sends out a line of dingoes between herself um, her sister's behind her and Nairuna in front of her. Now, Kambagda, she's represented um, by the cluster of Hades. Now, Kambagda sees Nairuna, Nairuna a little bit differently to everyone else. He is not this great hunter to Kambagda. Um, he's, a, he's a bit of a coward to Kambagda. She doesn't think too highly of him. And so she goes around and she starts mocking him and taunting him. She sends her dingoes out. Um, and this is um, a shield between her and, and the hunter, Nairuna. Now this obviously humiliation of Nairuna, it really infuriates him. And he doesn't like that that um, Kambagda would stand up to him like this because he's a fearsome hunter, right? Like he's got this this persona to keep up. And so as he gets infuriated, he begins to chant and, and produce fire magic. And that's represented by the club that's in his right hand. Now this club is represented by the star Betelgeuse, which is Alpha Orion, the brightest star within the Orion constellation. And it's one of these giant red variable stars that we spoke about. So this one's a semi-periodic one um, and it's one of these pulsating ones. Mm. Um, and so it's got an intrinsic sort of variability to it. Uh, then Kambugada has actual fire magic of her own. And so in retaliation to, to Nairuna rearing up with his fire magic, she raises her left foot, um, which is also has, has fire magic within it. And that's represented by the star Aldebaran. Mm -hmm. Um, which is in the, the Hyades cluster, the, the sort of the horns of, of, the, of the bull. Um, and in doing so, um, this sort of uh, intimidates Nairuna, and so he begins to cowardly retreat because he actually is the coward that, that Kambugada believes him to be. And then eventually, um, sort of after he sort of recovered from this humiliation, his lust begins to return for the sisters. And then he then again begins to sort of return with his fire magic as, as his club fire magic. And, the, and again, the, the variable property of Betelgeuse begins to reflare again and he comes back around. Um, but this time Kambugada calls on uh, Baba, the, the father of the, the dingo pups that she placed down. Uh, and then he attacks Nairuna. And then we see a, a twinkling again of these nearby stars. Um, which represents the, the nearby people actually laughing at Nairuna as he cowardly retreats for a second time um, and again causing that humiliation for his magic to dissipate 
and the, and the flaring of Betelgeuse to, to return again. So we can see in this story of Nairuna and Kambagda, or Orion and Palladius, uh, that the Kokatha people were very familiar with this very warm nature of the stars. And we can also see how this observational information has been embedded into this oral tradition. Uh, so this story actually ties into a series of stories um, from other nations, neighbouring nations within this sort of region of South Australia up into Central Australia, um, which actually ties to a song line. Um, and so it's the, the song line of the Pallades, the Seven Sisters, and they all have different sort of variations, different names based on the, the relevancy of, of the land and the country from which their story originates. But they all tie together with this sort of this idea of this uh, hunter and these sisters and, and this flaring of fire magic and this common theme that we see with this variable stars.